welcome back to my channel. I thought I would have coffee chat with you in bed. I'm gonna fold some laundry in a little bit, but I wanna fold laundry while we're talking. Jim was kind enough to bring me a cup of coffee this morning. And I just want to take my first sip with you. So, cheesy thumbnail. What did he get me? Early bird, sure. Cause I was up earlier than him, so. Mm. This morning I woke up at 9-11 which I'm big on numbers. So if you know, you know, but anyhow, good morning. Um, it is really been rough. It's been a rough week. I promised myself a long time ago that I would be as real with you guys as possible. And I'm not, not sharing. I know this sounds double negative, but I'm not, not sharing because I'm not feeling 100%. I'm not not sharing because I literally don't have like mm, to pick up the camera, to talk to people. <laughs> I think it's the f my favorite thing when um, like when Sharon will call to check up on me and like it forces me to talk which kind of sounds silly, or my sisters, um, it forces me to talk. And that's very helpful. So as I was trying to contemplate, like, you haven't really shared in over a week, and, you know, the people have been reaching out, and I, I love you guys for it, I really do. Um, one of my really good friends that I met on here, my benefactor, she knows who she is, has been amazing the last few days, actually quite a few days. Um, she had sent me some stuff, amazing stuff. She's so generous. But the day it arrived, I couldn't get out of bed. I was really having a really rough day. Um, you know, it's really weird because it's not like, it doesn't feel like depression. I'm not sad and I can't get out of bed. I feel like ick. Because I know that depression affects your physical body as well. So is that what I'm going through? Possibly. Is it other things? Possibly. Am I battling something inside? Possibly. Um, I feel better today. So it's like, do you, you know, is it worth going to the doctor? Do you just do your exercises? Basically what happened was I went to go get creamer out of the refrigerator one day when Jim had to work in the morning, I made my own coffee, which happens often. Um, you guys, only, I, I feel like I share with you when he makes me coffee. He makes the best coffee, but on most days he works early and I have to make my own stuff, which is okay. It's not, I don't mean like, I have to make it. Um, I don't know, this is just turning out to be like a weird conversation, but um, on most days I have to make myself. So I go and get my creamer and... For the first cup of coffee, I used the rest of the creamer that was in the front. And then I had to go try to get the creamer from the back. And there was so much stuff in this refrigerator. I am not mad at having a full refrigerator. I know it really frustrates my family. What frustrates me is I try to keep an organized refrigerator for a few reasons. Part of having ADD, like uh, Jim and I think Mom, has uh, just that connection. It's sort of a sight unseen like out of sight out of mind situation that's why i've we've talked before about forgive me my ears just are itchy from wearing the earphones all the time um m part of the add is that out of sight out of mind and i know we talked about this before with the snacks like they wouldn't eat the snacks unless they were all laid out and they could see them when i finally we finally built the pantry and it was like they had to go in for snacks. Mom decided to take all her snacks in her room, which is fine if she needs to see them like that. And that's fine. She wants to be able to have them more accessible. Jim, on the other hand, just stopped snacking as much, which I was a man at. The doctor really wanted him to cut down on his uh, sweets. He was becoming pre-diabetic and his triglycerides were as they always are because he's genetically predisposed to having really high triglycerides. But all of the sugary stuff, all the stuff that he's eating, is also not really good for him. Um, so I wasn't minding that his snacks were away and he wasn't eating them. 
as much. Um, but the refrigerator is like, they, they want to just put it in there. Like not, and not mom so much. Mom has her two door shelves that <clears throat> she requested when we first moved in together because she wants to stuff, have her stuff like easily accessible. It's perfectly fine. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> she actually just had one in the beginning. And then we come to realize that her food, she wasn't eating her food when it was mixed in with the other food. So we just made her two shelves so she can get her food more accessible. Let me just take a sip of this because I got a tickle. Mm. I got a tickle. So I tried to keep my refrigerator like the top shelf is like dairy products that I want to keep the coldest because it's right next to the condenser. Then there's like, I want to say condiments, but it really aren't condiments. I'm more like um, side dishes, jarred food. Like um, that's where I keep my sauerkraut and Jim's pickled beets. I do have a jar of salsa there as well, but basically like jar sides or accents. I don't really know how else to pick pickles like that. And then the right side is like my sugar-free jelly and then yogurt cups in the front. It used to be all just my yogurt cups in the front, but Jim has started eating a lot more yogurt and that's what keep, he keeps there then. And that's fine, I don't care. It's just basically keep the yogurt there so we know where to find the yogurt. Okay, plus it's his eye line because he's taller than me. You know, he's like a little taller than me. So his eye line, um, he can see that open the refrigerator and look, there's the yogurt right in front of your face. The next shelf down is where I like to keep my leftovers. I do have a plastic bin that has extra condiments in it, like salad dressings that don't, well, mayonnaise and mustard don't fit in the door. Since we had to come up with another method, another container like this, because we gave mom another shelf in the door. So there's not room for like the mayonnaise. Um, just mayonnaise comes in a big jar. Yeah. But anyway, so there's like mayonnaise and mustard and like things like that in that plastic container. But then the leftovers all go on that shelf. And I find that important because for this very reason I'm about to tell you, I like to be able to tell people like if you want to see, you know, if it's leftovers day or fend for yourself day, if it's fend for yourself day, just check the leftover shelf. Is there something you can eat there? where I'm pretty diligent about like my dad always said in the restaurant it was like seven days if food you know if you didn't eat it in seven days it was going to go in the garbage certain things obviously not cold not sauerkraut <laughs> not salads not like coleslaw and stuff but just like like the meats and pastas like they just don't get better over time so anyway the the shelf below that is where I've We've always had like our eggs and then beverages. So like milk, usually how I've always organized it is the milk. The only exception to this is the asparagus stands up. When we do have asparagus, we open the bag and we stand them up next to the milk. So it's like the milk and the creamer behind it and the half and half. And then I like to give Jim his thing. So like sometimes he has sweet tea and then he'll put his drinks behind there. Mom keeps her drinks in the door. And then next to that is whatever dozen eggs we have left over, except for what we're using currently. So it, it was a mess. It was a mess. I, I will be 100% honest with you. I didn't complain and I don't complain. And this isn't even a complaint to tell you, just to lead up to the story. Um, he has been really taking good care of me the best that he can, 100% the best that he can. He's doing everything that he can. And I love him for it. So this isn't, less I'm saying, this isn't a complaint. This is just what had happened. So I went to go get out the new bottle of creamer, but things were just like everywhere. And I was like, what? There was, seemed like there was a visual hole, but like not a physical hole behind the milk. And I was like, what is this? And there was like two containers of leftovers from not weeks and weeks ago, but like mm, 10 days ago. Like it should have gotten thrown out when we did the refrigerator last week. Um, one of them was barbecue sauce, but it was in like the container where Jig Dickies, where Jimmy works. The other one was baked beans, which I can't eat. So that's why they didn't get eaten. <laughs> There's so much sugar in those baked beans. Forget carbs, sugar. So, um, I pulled them out. I put them on the leftover shelf, which was a mess because it had 
things in that like just things weren't where they belonged and I don't mean to be like I'm anal and things have to be where they belong but I try because my family does have ADD and needs to see things I try to make them in an order where they can see them tall things definitely go in the back so that you can see them Jim doesn't really like to bend over so much um, so anyway, so I was, as I was trying to fix this, I was pulling out the, the old leftover Dickies and I was trying to rearrange everything. I dropped the asparagus. They were in a plastic bag and they were fine, but I jarred my back trying to like, like, <gasps> was it milk or something that I was dropping? And, and just like, I went to grab it and I jarred my back. I will tell you the truth. Period cramps. I'm not getting period cramps. And if I've been out of shape and when I like that first work start working out in the springtime again, I don't get back pain. I've had a lot of difficulties. Uh, I lean on my shopping cart, but that's more for to maintain my stamina than it is for like to help my back. Actually, to be honest with you, leaning on the shopping cart kind of like bothers my back after a while. So I have to like keep standing up, but it's to help support me while I walk. I don't get back pain. It is not a good thing. Um, I feel such sympathy for people who have back pain. Like it's really, it's been like that. I was like, oh, now I won't lie. I get like, if you sneeze wrong, I'm, I'm 50. I won't tell you the, I'll tell you the truth. You sneeze wrong, you twist wrong. Yeah, but all of that, like, I've had back ache before and I can work it out and I twist, you know, like you just do this and you just twist it and you work it out. This wasn't like that. This was like, oh, Jerry, I think you did something because it was days. It was days of ibuprofen and trying to get a comfortable position and the TENS unit, which is like um, a transdermal, electronic nerve stimulator which is basically this these, these like silicone pads that send electronic signals that you can adjust and control anyway jimmy bought it with his mom like years ago and it's just like and the screen's cracked but it still works so we just use it but um it's it's the only thing that's really really been relieving the pain that and I'm constantly just stretching. I'm trying to do whatever PT exercises uh, I can find that Jimmy used to do and then that uh, I could find on the internet. I don't know. I mean, it's still now I will tell you the truth. It's still sore. It does feel a ton better, but it's still sore. So I'm still careful. Um, it's really weird because I haven't been able to bet to pick up with my knees since I'm like 25 actually look younger than that 23 I haven't really been able to you know lift with your knees I've been lifting with my back for 25 years or plus 25 plus years and it hasn't been a problem because I know how to do it like so you would think I would have had back pain way sooner is what I'm trying to say with bad knees often comes bad back pain because you have to compensate but no this was this was just bizarre. And um, because of it, I didn't sleep well the first night, which was, Jimmy worked a double on Tuesday. So I hurt my back on Monday. And then Tuesday, I really couldn't get out of bed. He worked a double. He came home about 8.30, quarter to nine, I think. And I was still in bed and he was pissed, believe it or not. He was actually like mad. And he, I said, I was really sorry that um, I never got up to turn the light on the porch. I only got up three times to pee. I hadn't eaten anything like the whole day. I took my meds in the morning. I didn't have my fiber or a coffee or anything. And it was like 8.30 at night. And he gets really mad when I don't take care of myself. But I just was exhausted. I know that I'm feeling ick, but then hurting my back too. And it's like, you know, like I said, I know depression comes with physical pain. Excuse me. I know depression comes with physical pain, but in all honesty, 
the one thing that I had going for me, like, at least was I could do stuff. Like, I couldn't do as much as I did 20 years ago. Who can? I guess people can. I take that back. But I couldn't do as much. I can't do as much as I could do 20 years ago or 10 years ago or five years ago. But I can still do stuff. So, like, it was my, I was my mental sadness, my mental depression. Um, so, I know that it manifests physically as well. But I really have been trying to, like, do things, um, do the things that I can do when I can do them. I say that because when the physical body goes, then you're like, oh my God, what do I have left to offer anybody except being a lump? Like I'm not, um, <laughs> they're doing some construction on the corner at some guy's house. And it's just been like three days of listening to this these machines back up forward and back and forward it's weird i don't even know if you can hear it and then you're like jerry what are you doing but there's a beep 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 like someone backing up anyhow okay Whoop. wrangle it in what is it uh focus focus um a focus she's focus focus um anyway i Anyhow, um, when I felt like I have nothing to offer anybody, look, I, I am in no current mental or physical state to do all the things that I wanted to do in my house, to rearrange my furniture that I wanted to do in the springtime. I want to do it so desperately. I have no strength whatsoever. I actually said to Jimmy, I'm like, he has had some physical issues the last couple of days. And I'm like, if we could do this, this, and this, then we could do this, this, and this. And But I really don't know what I can do other than, like, be the organizer. Like, I don't want to hurt myself because I'm still sore. So it's like, when you're still sore, you have more, I feel like you have a better chance of injuring it again. Um, I kind of don't know if that's true, but I feel like when you're sore, that means the muscles haven't repaired um, or gotten their strength back. I don't know if that's true, but that's how I feel. So I'm still doing the PT. I'm still doing the stretches. Um, but I'm like, I don't know what I can do other than just sit here. And I'm like, like I said, I'm going to fold the laundry. I think we're going to work on some of the stuff in the room today. Um, I just really want for his sake to like be able to do this. But it's like, at my sake. I got to get this carpet up. It's killing us. I know it is. Like, I feel the difference when I come in here about breathing. No joke. And this room, I have my own air purifier. And I have a water vaporizer. And we don't smoke in here. Smoke does come through the vents, I will tell you. But not to the extent of, like, being out in the living room and you smell the smoke. Or you actually, like, inhale it when mom opens her door or whatever. But... It's harder for me to breathe in here because of the carpet. And I have a good vacuum and I do vacuum it all the time. But there are areas behind the dressers that you can't get to. And there's this carpet was here when we moved in. It's not even just our allergens that are in there, not our skin cells and hair cells. And there's things in this carpet. Plus, it's carpet. Besides the dust mites and the dust and everything, it's carpet. It, whole, it has its own fiber that it throws out into the air and stuff excuse me um so I just really need like I really want to just get in here and start working and it's like it's frustrating to physically not be able to do it and I kind of keep thinking like if 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 we I don't know if we take out a loan can we hire somebody to come and help us I, it's kind of like all of my nieces and nephews are currently working really well and like, there's nobody can come and, like, help or whatever. And I just, I feel, I feel, like, trapped a little bit in my body and in my mind. And there are days, most days, most times of most days, that when I can think about that, I want to stop it. And I do whatever I can to stop it. But there are the times where you don't recognize that that's what's happening. And you just feel that way. And I, I want to share all of this with you because I know from sharing the first day, 
there's so many of you going through the same thing. And I know so many of you, the other of you are caring about what's happening with us, which I love so much. Ugh. I want to just be here and do things with you. And it's so difficult these days. It's really, really difficult. I can't get out of my own way, it seems like. But um, I... I really do have to get back to it. I really do have to um, start See, that's what I'm trying to say is, uh, okay, I'm sorry. That just had a conversation in my head. I was going to say that I have to start pushing myself, but I realized I am pushing myself every freaking day. Just getting out of bed is like pushing yourself when you just are sad about things and you have this like really sense of grief and loss. And how long does the grief and loss go? Um... It's such a unique thing for me. I, I can't even, I can't even tell you. Like, I know everybody grieves in their own way and everybody has their own experiences and everybody has their own relationships with everybody. But this is just such a unique thing for me that I just I can't get past it. And it's, it's hard. And I talk about it all the time and I'm not, I don't cry on a regular basis. I do cry like, um... Was it yesterday? Yeah, yesterday Jim was off. So Tuesday he worked the double. And when he came to, when he came home, he was very angry. Or not he was angry, but he was very upset that nobody turned the light on for him. And I think he was more disappointed in his mom. Because if he, you know, he was like, well, if Jerry can't get out of bed, mom usually steps up. And he, she didn't even check in on me all day or whatever. And I, like, she did text me to say that there were five boxes on the porch um on her way out and then but she she never brought them in and they weren't heavy but she just brought in two or whatever jimmy said so um but he was upset with her because she never turned the light on for him and she never checked on me other than telling me there was boxes but it's not like me not to come out and he was very upset about that and he was angry with me because i wasn't taking care of myself is how, how he felt but when he came home i just was like can you just hold me like i just need you to hold me and he did and i just that was the first time i cried in a really long time but i just just i just needed to i just needed to I tried to tell him that I don't miss you when you're at work because there's nobody here to do stuff for me. There are days where I just don't have it where I can't take care of myself or I will do like when I get up to go to the bathroom before I come back, I will grab food or a snack or something. But there are days that I like days like that where I can't, I won't take care of myself. And just because I can't, like, I can't even stand at the counter for the 20 minutes to scramble eggs or not even 20. It's like less than that. But I have this thing where I have to like clean up when I'm done and I have to, that takes time. And then they have to put stuff away. And then a lot of times in my house, which again, it's not a complaint. It's just the way it is. It's like, you go to cook something, but there's a huge mess from yesterday or this morning. Like a lot of times I don't, I do intermittent fasting, so I can't eat before 12 o'clock. So like by that time, Jimmy's had breakfast, mom's had breakfast, mom's sometimes have even had lunch. And sometimes that they just leave their stuff in the sink and stuff on the counter. And if there's stuff in the sink, then they'll leave that on the counter. And if the dishwasher's clean, but nobody has the energy to put it away, it just becomes this whole thing. So it's not just taking 10 minutes out of your day to scramble an egg or two or whatever. It's also like you have to clean the kitchen first. And I, to be honest with you, a couple of years ago, it was one of the things that 
um, I don't want to say I resented, but I kind of did. I guess that's the right word, resented. Because it seemed implied that I was the housekeeper as opposed to being just an equal member of this family. Um, it's still implied from time to time. Like I was told the other day, there was dust on the wall where the old air purifier would be. And I'm like, well then get a freaking Swiffer and take the dust off. I get angry sometimes, I'm sorry. Why are you telling me this? I am not your maid. I am not your housekeeper. If you see dust somewhere, get the duster and clean it. You go to places that I don't go. I never really go into her room. Jim usually goes to talk to her about all stuff. And then she comes out and uh, he gets her when it's dinner time because usually I'm cooking. So like that's just, I never go over there. So I won't ever see the dust. And yes, when I feel like cleaning the room, I do a thorough cleaning and then I clean the area like I move her rocker and stuff. But it's like, don't just say something, do something about it. Like, what are you talking to me like this for? And the same thing with the dishes. And, you know, Ma Mama's been really good about doing the dishes since like August. And there are days where she can't do it either. Her, her back and her physical, uh, she has a bad back and sometimes it bothers her so much that she can't. Um, do it but um but like to just leave your stuff for the next day I guess I don't know it's just the dishwasher's right there you're an adult run the water rinse your dish put in the dishwasher I know people have this problem with their children <laughs> but these are adults and they're capable adults and it's sort of like you know, like, why are you leaving this for me? Somebody needs to sweep the floor. Your hands aren't broken. Get the broom. At least somebody needs to sweep the floor. What does that even mean? Sweep the freaking floor. It's your house. If you don't want to sweep and you only want to use the vacuum, use the vacuum on the floor. It's a multi-purpose vacuum. It's sort of like... Oh my goodness. Now I won't lie and tell you that because of my vision problems, this is not an excuse. This is 100% truth. And I think I told this toilet story and I'll tell the toilet story again in case you're new, but I don't see what everybody sees who have, who has perfect vision. I will not lie to you. The reason I, I tell you this is because I think it was two or three years ago, I was replacing the handle on the toilet. And I have always been very diligent about my toilet. My mom used to tell us, cause we lived in a very small house with a lot of people and there was to always stuff everywhere just because people had stuff. Um, and my mother used to say like, no matter how unorganized your house is, as long as your toilet's clean, people won't think you're a slob. And I don't know if that's true or it's just something she put in there and it's stuck. So, I've always been very diligent about keeping my toilet clean. It's a little hard here because we have hard water. Then we, you know, like when we were on Long Island, the water was like amazing. Um, just Eau de Fawcett was like the best water ever in, on Long Island anyway. Long Island Water Company, shout out. Woo -woo. Actually, it's American Standard Water Company or something now or whatever. But anyhow, woo -woo. focus, focus, focus. Okay. Um, I was changing the toilet handle. And I was sitting backwards on there and I was had my readers on there because I was reading the directions. And I looked down and I was like, oh my gosh, I swear I just cleaned this toilet. And it was at that moment a few years ago that I realized you need to wear glasses when you're cleaning the toilet because you cannot see the stuff that you're leaving behind because literally your eyesight. Now, here's the thing with the floor though. These are readers. <laughs> I'm not getting this close to the floor to see the dirt. And from five foot six, or my eyeballs are probably at five foot three, I cannot see the dirt on the floor. Um, I'm barefoot constantly, and I could feel when there's like big chunks of debris, but I also have neuropathy from being a type two diabetic. And I can't always feel when there's just like 
dust on the floor or crumbs on the floor or even like like salt i can't even feel something as uh as minuscule as salt i can feel when there's big things and i can see when there's big things like when there's a big piece of paper a white piece of paper on the floor i totally can see it i bend over pick it up but i can't see it and and it's like I appreciate you telling me because I can't see it, but I am not responsible. I'm not the housekeeper. I'm not the person responsible for cleaning the house. I mean, today is a different story, but I've been working in YouTube since December of 2016. And I've been bringing in income since June, July. I think my first paycheck was July of 2017. I've been earning money to support this family just as much as my husband and my mother-in-law since July of 2017. Up until my brother passed away, I thought we were all three part equals. Now, granted, I work from home, but so what? Like, everybody works. Does it make a difference that I work from home? So anyway, I'm like, which I have to tell you the truth. Before I started, before I started menopause in December of 2019, it wasn't a big deal because once a month I wanted everything clean. So I kind of don't know that I created a, um, an environment like that, but I don't think I did because I didn't discourage anybody from cleaning. I just did that once a month deep clean, um, every month anyway. So, I don't know, did did they take advantage of it? Did I take advantage of it? I, I don't know. I, I really don't. It just it just blows my mind sometimes. That's what I'm trying to get to. Um, I don't do the laundry uh, part of, the washer and dryer part of the laundry, as you know. Um, we've talked about this before. I usually separate and then I fold, usually. Depending on, lately, depending on my mood and how I feel, Jimmy's been doing it. Um, but normally I don't do the washer and dryer portion. But there are occasions where, you know, like um, what happened a couple of weeks ago, Jimmy's been having two days off in a row. So he's not been getting all of the laundry done in one day, which he used to do. He used to like really stay on top of it and like get it done in one day. <clears throat> but a couple of weeks ago, he actually got called in on his second day off. So like the laundry was like mid cycle. So I, I, of course, went out there to help and well, it's help, but go out and do it. Um, just for you who know that since I met my husband, he has been responsible for the garbage and the laundry, part, that part, those two parts of the laundry, as well as taking care of like his own spaces. He likes, he doesn't want me to clean his dresser or his desk. He likes to do that himself. So I have always left that for him to do. Um, but he's been, that's it, garbage and laundry, and that's it. Or that half of the laundry. Anyway, so I go out to the washer and dryer, and I'm like, oh my lord, does anybody, like, empty the lint trap? And I'm like, this is a fire hazard. My mother was so big on it, the AHRC was so big on it. And I'm like, okay, so, like, that was a couple of loads, but that's not even it. Next to the dryer, we have like the vent brush, like the big brush on the end of the wire that you go into the vent and you clean. All over the top of the dryer is like tons of linty dust. You guys know what linty dust is? You know what I'm saying? All that like little gray micro lint that just is coating everything. And I'm like, geez. Louise. The bottles that I use for the laundry detergent, I was like, Jim, these are empty. Why don't you ask me to refill them? He's like, they've been empty for a really long time. I'm like, oh, good. Why didn't you ask me to refill them a long time ago then? So it's just things were just like the lint garbage can that I created was like overflowing. The cover was off. They just kept stuffing lint. It. <sighs> like just, just pray. Just breathe, Jerry. Just breathe. Don't breathe too deep because all the linty dust. <laughs> So I told him, I'm like, this is the easiest thing to clean. When you go to put one of the dish rags, dirty dish rags, it's fine, into the dish, into the laundry, run the dirty, the cleanest dirty dish rag you can get. And if you can't, if there's no dirty dish rags, we have like cleaning rags on the side of the refrigerator. 
grab a cleaning rag as you're running the machine just wet it and just go whoosh, 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 whoosh. all the linty dust is gone and throw it in the washing machine it's probably the easiest thing in the world to clean like if you had a self-cleaning toilet this would be easier i'm telling you um but it's just like ugh. you know it's just like that it is it is you think like you're making it as easy for people to do the task and then you come and they're like oh my god nobody's doing this um can i make it any easier i don't see how i can make it easier um but i'm gonna do what i can do just the same as i hope everybody else does what they can do i mean i just pray <laughs> you know but anyway um I tried to explain to my husband um, that I want to be able to help more like I used to do more around the house. But I'm like, but when you leave me these really backbreaking isn't the word, but like energy sucking. When you leave me all these extra energy sucking tasks, I'm not going to be able to do the things that I want to accomplish. Like, he went to deep clean the counters uh, for me a couple of weeks ago. And he's like, "These the counters just need to be deep clean. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. This was in like in depths of being blah, depression situation. And I was like, I'm really sorry. Um, I haven't gotten to that in a while. And deep cleaning by like pulling out all the appliances. I wipe down the counter every time I go out to the kitchen. And I'm done using it, I wipe down the counter. And usually I'm not wiping down just my stuff, but that's okay. He meant like pull all the appliances out and do a deep clean. And I'm like, I'm really sorry. If you guys know, every usually every time I change decor, um, I clean, do a deep clean. You know, like we take off all the old decor and before we put the new stuff up, I take a deep clean. But it's, we never put anything up after Christmas, really. A few Valentine's Day decorations, but hardly anything. Uh nothing really for St. Patrick's Day. It, I've just been not me. Barely anything for Easter. Did I put up anything for Easter? I don't think I did. No, I don't think so. <sighs> I want my life back. Sorry, it just hit me like. But anyway, so it, since I haven't been doing that, we haven't had that deep clean that gets done often. Um, so he did it and um, he got a small sample of my frustration. Um, why is there crumbs under the bread box? Well, the only thing I could think of, hon, is that somebody, instead of wiping off the counter, wiped it under the bread box because... I don't know how crumbs could get under the bread box. I'm sure naturally crumbs could get under the bread box. I don't know how they get under there. So stuff like that, you know, like. We have a <clears throat> Ninja Foodie air fryer toaster oven toaster dehydrator. It's like this combination thing. And I love it. But we use the air fryer portion to fry chicken wings. They were like from the package and. They're already smoked and everything, but they, you know, air fry them basically. Well, apparently they made, these ones were extra greasy and they splashed up on the lid of the, the inside of the toaster oven. So I didn't realize it. You know, we cleaned the trays and everything and, you know, the crumbs out and all the things. But I realized all this grease had gotten onto the ceiling. So then mom uses it every day to make a toaster strudel and the alarm goes off because the oil is burning on the top of the thing and she's saying it smells like rancid oil and I'm like well I don't care how rancid it could be it's been exactly 12 hours since I fried the chicken wings I don't know but you know it smells to me like it's burning oil so maybe we just have a different idea of what that smells like so instead of cleaning it which, okay, you'd be cleaning up after someone else, but you're still at your appliance. Like, I just don't get it. She used the toaster for like 
four days in a row and the alarm went off every morning and I didn't notice it. That's not a thing. Apparently she made it quiet before it got like so many beeps that it, it I noticed it except for one day. Jim, on the other hand, noticed it right away. And I'm like, four days this has been going on? And then he's like, he went to go clean the oil. And of course, the oil's not going to come off. It's been baked on for four days. So it's just stuff like that. You'd be like, okay, if I can manage to clean up after everybody, what is the problem? Like, I don't understand it. I just don't. When I met my husband, he had these, like, different lazy tendencies for certain things. And what I used to say all the time was he's just like a different kind of lazy. He's not my kind of lazy. Um, I would do that work smarter, not harder type of thing. I wouldn't constantly get up for everything that I forgot. I kind of had like, oh, you were up. And if you forgot that one thing, well then forget it. Unless you're just going to have to do without now or whatever. Um, but they would get up 27 times to like, oh, I forgot the Coke. I forgot that. I go back to saying, I forgot the water. I forgot to like that to me, but you won't rinse your dish and put it in the dishwasher. Like to me, it's like, oh, Lordy Lord. What? I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't get it. I don't understand. You won't take the extra three minutes it takes to organize the refrigerator in such a way that the leftovers will fit on the leftover shelf. Okay. You know, it's like. I don't get it. So it's living with other people, obviously, has always been an issue. Not an issue. It could be an issue, obviously. When you're your brothers and sisters, and when you're the youngest, and I was the youngest for 12 years. When you're the youngest for 12 years, everything's already established by the time you get there. Everybody has their roles. Everybody has their mannerisms all set up. They've all been living together for a while. And, you know, by the time you have a personality, like, by the time I was, like, I want to say I had a personality, it was, like, maybe you're seven or eight. By the time I was seven or eight, my sisters were almost teenagers. Two of them were teenagers. But by the time I was eight, Janie was 13, Alicia was 12, and Julie was 11. So, preteen. And my brother was 18. So, like, by the time, and my parents were obviously adults. So, by the time they, like... I start to get my own personality. We have like all these people who have already been living together and established their hierarchy or have their mannerisms and whatever it is. So that's different. But when you go and live with people who you haven't lived with before, who are very different than um, your family. So like even your family as they're growing up, you all have different personalities, but you all have similar structures in a way so like we were just talking at dinner the other night my dad used to have a comb it was an old tupperware comb it was like the clear green plastic if you know what i mean like the rubbery plastic and it was a big one it wasn't like tupperware makes little combs now it was like a big one and it was like the thick on this side and the thin on that well it's you know what i mean um the fine tooth comb on half of it and the wide tooth comb on the other half is what I meant to say. And if we ever used this and didn't return it, he didn't care that we used it. As long as it went back the next day, he woke up and he did his routine where he had his comb and he needed to comb his hair. Otherwise, everybody was up at 5.30 in the morning looking for the comb. Where's my comb? Now, get up, get up, get up, get up. Where's my comb? Oh, you know, Jerry had it. Da -da 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 -da. Okay, good. Let's get the comb, blah, blah, blah. Like, we all know to put stuff, certain things back where they belong so that you can find them next time. Um, because my dad did that to us, you know. Um, he would step on jacks, and we were no longer allowed to have jacks because they hurt a lot. But then we had Chinese checkers, and they didn't hurt to step on them, but then they would break. So it's like you put it away, or it's going in the garbage, and you're not getting it again. Um, so certain things, you know, you know, you know that you have to take care of, that you have to do, that you have to, um, you have to, uh, I don't want to pay attention to that doesn't even make sense, but you have to make sure you know that it goes back where it belongs so that you can find it next time 
and it fits and things can go like it just it made sense <sighs> when we were growing up we had one single basin sink and my father used to have a dish pan we kept on the little like left side of the dish pan or the right side depending on where the dish tray rack was at the time and we knew that Scrape your dirty dish and it goes in the dish pan. Put the dishes on the bottom. Don't stack your dish on the top because if you do like a dish and a bowl and then put another plate on top, and that's what I mean by dish, a plate. If you put a plate and a bowl and then a plate on top, it looks like it got really full really fast. But if you nest the plates, you can get more in there. Blah, blah, blah. Like we learn these things. Don't put sharp knives in the dishwater. Leave them on the side. These are things that we learn that we all do, that we think is common sense. But obviously when you move in with someone else who doesn't do those kinds of things, it's not that common. It just isn't. Um, I, I will tell you that there's some things that I feel like out of respect that I accommodate people people's requests out of respect. And I have always done that because I would like that in return, but I don't get that in return. And again, this doesn't, I feel like this is not a complaint vlog. And I'm not trying to complain about everything. I'm just trying to chat with you guys. There are certain things like, I have asked since we moved in seven and a half years ago, could we just keep the right side of the sink clear? If you can rinse your dish, rinse it and put it in the left side. If you can't, put it on the left side of the sink on the counter. That's it. That's all I've ever asked. I want to be able to make my breakfast in the morning, wash my pot and pan, but I like to keep the right side of the sink clear in case I ever have like a burn, not like a, you know, like something like, a, I don't know, an overburn on something. I have to get it immediately into the sink, that kind of thing. Um, that's why I have asked that like for like forever. And it's, it's constantly forgotten about. And I was like, this is the only thing that I have requested of my family since we moved in and you cannot accommodate me. It's so weird to me that I feel like it's almost to keep me disrespected. Does that make sense? Like you can't, I can accommodate everybody's quirks and you know, wants and needs and little desires but nobody can just do this one thing for me it's weird it's so weird um now on a on a marriage level it's the toilet seat now i know a lot of people battle about the toilet seat and i never really battled about the toilet seat when we moved in with mom the toilet seat here like when i drop it it makes noise that she can hear in her room apparently so i've been trying to like always like lower it slowly um but I can't always do that. Sometimes my back, sometimes my urgency. But since I started menopause, my urgency has shot through the roof. And I said to Jim, I'm like, if I, I know I never really, this was not a thing. Please just put the toilet seat down. If you could just put the toilet seat down, if you could just put the toilet seat down, I will have less accidents because I will get to the toilet and be going before the seat is down. I know it's like terrible and I try so hard. My bladder goes from like zero to 60. And I mean that like, I don't get, oh, I have to pee. I get like, you are peeing. Like close your legs because here it comes. Which is weird because I never had kids. And I've said that to a lot of people. I know people have bladder issues that don't have kids, but it's weird that I like never had kids. Um, I don't have a UTI because there's no other symptoms other than just having to be. I just know that I'm old and it's happening. You know, it's what it is. It is what it is. Um, I do my exercises just to try to help. But I've been in the last two years just being like, could you please just put the toilet seat down? I will. So what I can do to help you put the toilet seat down. And I kind of feel like. I kind of feel like a little disrespected about that. I mean, he does know, because if I say to him, if we're like done watching a movie and he's like, I gotta go to the bathroom, I'm like, me too. He will like, 
he will like know and he'll put the toilet seat down like I'm coming right now. Why can't you do that all the time? You don't pee twice. He, unless I'm not home, he has never gone to the bathroom and not had to lift the toilet seat because I pee way more frequently than he does. This is way too much information you guys need to know about our bladders, but he's never not had to lift the seat. And unless I go to the bathroom first and then I lift it for him because I know he's right behind me. I've done that before. Again, out of courtesy. He's just like, oh, I know that you're going to go to the bathroom. So um, anyway, let's let's bring this back to a place of love and support. <laughs> Have more coffee. Ow. Oh, jeez. Oh. I'm falling apart. I'm a mess. Okay. Mm. So it was good catching up with you. It was lovely talking to you all today. And I really do appreciate your kindness and your support and your love and your generosity. It means more to me than you would ever know. Um, I know I say thank you, thank you, thank you, but that's not enough. Thank you is not enough. Um, I wish things were where I expect them to be by now, um, where we're all meeting up and hugging and loving on each other, but we're not there yet. So um, I promise that when we do, we will 100%. And uh, as always, you guys take care. God bless. I'll see you next time. Bye.